What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I want to cover everything that we can do as far as overrides for callouts, sections, section heads. This would also apply to elevations. Um, maybe you want to change the color. I've gotten some comments that maybe you want to change the color, the line type, this or that. So we're gonna in this video we're gonna look at how you can change these couple different types of elements to suit your style, your documents, what you might need to do, how you want to show them, whatever. That's all up to you, but I'm going to show you how you can do it. But first, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I sure hope you do, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out a lot. Okay, getting into it now. I'm in just a basic floor plan, nothing special here, but the thing to be aware of is that I'm also in just a default Revit template, so that I've done no overrides to absolutely anything. All I have is this model and these callouts in section and I don't care about what's in them or anything I just I care about what we see here which is this call out in this section and like I said before maybe we, we get to the point where we realize you know it looks you know it's a little bland it's a little boring I want to bulk this line up I want to maybe change the color I want to highlight it make it red any of these things can happen so how can we do that well the first thing we need to do is make sure that we are you know looking at the right information so if I click on this we can see everything in the properties is just has everything to do with this view and has nothing to do with what we see here as far as this call out or this head this call out head so what do we do about that well it's a matter of finding that and so where do we find that well it's in the families and we want to make sure that we go to the annotation symbols so like this is kind of insider information because this is not readily displayed in revit but it's something that's loaded as a family within really every project that you're probably working on so what we want to look at here is there's a call out head. That's cool. So that's going to be this guy. Uh, we've also got everything with with sections. We've got a section head. In this case, this would be the section head filled. That would not necessarily apply to this line because it's just the head. But then we've also got these section tails that we could choose from. So there's there's a decent amount that we might need to edit depending on how we want it to look. But I want to first focus on this call out. Um, so when we have this call out, we have this of course we just saw this call out head and so let's go ahead and edit that so at this point I'm gonna say maybe we want to change it to red you know you can again you can make absolutely any override that you want to make and I want to make sure that this is project wide because <clears throat> the last thing I want to do is just decide well I want to override this element because I can click on this all day long and then override the element and then just simply change this to red and now you'll see the result we get but you'll also notice that if I replace this if I end up placing another one, I mean, then this one will not be red. And so that's kind of the point of this video. We want to make sure that we have all of these showing as red if we want them to be red. Like that's kind of the point. So, okay, here we go. I also want to say that we're looking, make sure we're looking at the right type or something. In this case, it's just called the floor plan. There's nothing here. And if I go to the edit type, we can see this is kind of the information that we're looking for. So call out tag. In this case, this is what we're looking for for this particular family. So right now, I know that the call out head in this case is it's looking directly at this family. So this call out family there is this head. And I can see this if I come in here, there's nothing here. So where do we see this? Well, I have to right click the family, which is the top there, and then edit that. And then at this point we can see, all right, here's a sample information. It's kind of everything you used to seeing. But what I like to do is come down here and you'll see preview visibility and then preview visibility on. So that's nothing has changed because if we were happen to place this onto a sheet and call it uh, view one on sheet A101 and have this be similar, this is what it would look like. So it's it basically a sample of what it's looking like. And this is based on all the settings that you have within the family. So this doesn't apply so much to this family because of there being nothing else in this family. So really at this point, we're previewing what it actually looks like in our project with this preview visibility. But like I said, what I want to do is make sure I come in here and change these to red. Well, I, you know, I basically have call out headlines and then I have invisible lines, then I have text. Well, we can deal with the text because it's just, it's simply a label. So, but I, I can edit that there and then just, again, change this to red. Very simple. Once I do that, these are all using the same type of label, which makes it simple. But when it comes to the lines, I don't have any other line types. So where would I find that? That would be found under manage and object styles. So the thing to be aware of with object styles, and I would say be careful with object styles, whether you're in a family or a project, is that that is completely project-wide, completely family-wide, because 
it is literally that particular object throughout the entire family and or throughout the entire project. Whereas if you simply look at visibility graphics, which there are not really visibility graphics that we need to be aware of here, um, visibility graphics are just based on the view or the view that you have within a template, all the no all those views. But you can also access object styles from the visibility graphics, which is then going to take you, of course, to visibility graphics from there to object styles. And this is, again, project-wise, so be aware of that. So here we can see what we're looking for. We see call-out heads. That's the particular line type that I'm looking for. In this case, obviously, it's black, and the line weight's one and whatever, so black. We can change this to red. And like I said before, maybe we want to bulk this up a bit. We want to make it stand out a little more because it, you probably want it to. So maybe we'll make it three. So it'll be a bit thicker and three. So, okay, I, I that's looking better. So I'm going to go ahead and load this into my project. I don't need to save it. I probably would if I were doing this for a real project. So there we go. We have that there. Uh, so let's get back to this. I mean, we, I, we've got the the section or the, the callout head that is different than the actual callout itself, which I know we have more control over. And we can find that within the object style. So again, these, these object styles are project based and these are something that's going to Im impact everything. You can find these also within the visibility graphics of a view, but also remember that just because you're in the visibility graphics of this view, clicking object styles will take you to that, like of course, object styles. But again, this object styles is for the whole project. So where can we find call out? Well, we're actually going to find it in annotation objects because it's an annotation. It's 2D. And then we can see here we have call out heads, which even changing the properties here, does not seem to override. That was something I had tried already. What we want to look at now is call out boundary, and that's going to be that boundary line that establishes the actual uh, boundary of the view of the call out itself. And if I hit plus here, I can see I have a call out leader, call out leader line there that I can also change. And so maybe again, maybe we want this to be blue. Maybe we want this to be red. It doesn't matter. So I'll go ahead and change this to red, make that red. And I also want to make the leader line red as well because, you know, I wouldn't want inconsistent line types that are touching and doing the exact same thing. But I also probably want to make these at least a line weight of three just to make them a little more bold. But again, this is absolutely all up to you. I'm showing you this so you know how to do it, where it is, and what you can do, and what you might want to do for your projects. So I click OK, and there we go. And this is what we're looking at. You know, it's a little bit thicker. It, it It's probably more what we want. I might want something thicker than that because you know I want it to pop. I want it to be known what this is. So maybe I'll up that up to even a six because it, you know I really want this to pop a little more. And this might give me a little more what I want. So that looks that looks pretty good. I mean, you know, when I'm zooming out, I can see. All right, I have this nice bold call out right there. And again, of course, you could take it as far as you want because I could always come back in here and I want this to be solid. I don't want this to be a dash dot or anything like that. I just want this to be boom, one big thick line. Cool. There it is. Now, again, it's all up to you. But what I will say is that at this point, you maybe you want to get rid of these rounded corners. Well, <laughs> the weird place to find that actually is within the callout tag itself. And you'll see here the callout tag, there's a corner radius, which is currently set at one eighth of an inch. Now, I am in the basic Revit template, so maybe your firm has done something a bit different. But as far as this out of the box type goes, I see this callout head with an eighth inch corner radius, which is exactly what we're looking at. So if I change this to zero, obviously we'll get a zero inch radius, and that means I get these nice square. So really, this is kind of, uh, again, it's all up to you, but that's going to be how you're going to deal with it for the purposes of a call out. Now, moving on to a section, I will say with the section, we have more versatility, more options. I do like that. I honestly not sure what the big difference is between this call out head and a section head other than the way they're loaded in and how they work. I don't know. Uh, because we have a lot more that we can do with the section head. So like I said before at the beginning of this video, if we come down here and within the annotation symbols, we come down, we can see section head, we can see filled, not, we have these different types to work with. So if I click on this type, this happens to be a building section, I actually have all kinds that I can choose from for uh, this section tag, and this is dealing with the head. And so here we go. Uh, I have all of these to choose from here. These are all different section heads and tails that I could use for the head or the tail. And then, of course, I have different options for the broken style of the section, whether I choose to break it or not, what it looks like. Uh, 
this is telling me that I have the option of have it shown as a gap. Like if I choose to break it, it will show and appear as a gap. Or I can have it as continuous if I have it broken, which is kind of weird. It kind of defeats the purpose. But for the section head and tail, I have the option of choosing between all of these different families. So with all that to say, what I want to focus on really is the section head and the section tail. We want to edit that, maybe change the color, something like that. So I want to make sure I know which one we're using, which in this case is the section head filled. And I'll just go ahead and edit that type or edit that family actually. And we, we're pretty familiar with this. I want to go ahead and preview that visibility. And then I want to make sure that I change everything here to red. Of course, these are all looking at the exact same label we can see there. Uh, but within the type, I can change this to red. Once that's red, all those labels will change. And right here we have this filled region. It's just solid filled, so I'll go ahead and just change this to red because that's really what we want. After that's red, those are all red. And again, we're going to go back to these lines, and we can see, okay, that's a section mark subcategory. And then even if I edit this, I can see the edge here is a section mark. So cool, we have all of these lines that are falling up and falling together as the same lines. So now I can go to the Manage and Object Styles for this particular family, and I can change that section mark from black to red in this case because that's what I want. And again, maybe we'll up this up to three, get a little bit thicker, and I'll leave it at solid because that seems to make the most sense. And boom, there we go. We can see that we have this nice bolded red callout, and it's cool. So let's go ahead and load this in. I don't need to save it. So once I load this in, we can see that our section, of course, <laughs> just like before, the section head does not work. And, you know, not necessarily sure why from what I can tell. So like whenever I select it there, it, you can see that it's actually red. And whereas this, I can't quite tell. So my guess is actually, and this is kind of an odd guess, <laughs> it's more of a hunch at this point, is that whenever I print, I'll get this to show up as red. So we're going to leave that to the end of the video. But what I want to do now is... Again, go back to the object styles, or we can go ahead and look at this this tail because we're gonna, it's going to be a very similar thing. We can come here to section tail filled, and we've got a couple different types here, which they're just dimensions that we have to work with. So we're really concerned about the family. So I want to edit that family, and like before, we have different types to work with, and you can see the different types here by clicking on the family types, and we can see we have multiple types here. So what I want to do is actually preview the visibility, so I can see which type we're working with. So. Uh, since they're both using this solid black, it doesn't necessarily matter that I keep this black or not. Yeah, it will say black, but I'm going to go ahead and change this to red because we're changing everything to red. Getting some overrides here. So there we go. It's red. And we want to make sure we're editing these right lines, make sure we're choosing those. So this is a thin line. Okay, so I can go to manage now. And then again, object styles. Change my thin line. Maybe that is a three and then red because we're more concerned about the color. Click OK, and there we go. Looks pretty good. Go ahead and load this back into the project, and we'll see if it works. It may or may not. My guess is uh, I think it will work. So there we go. We've got the, the tails working for us right there. And so now I want to actually return to the object styles for the whole project. And if I go to annotation and click S, I can come down here to section line and then section marks. So when I expand these, I can see broken section line or just regular section line. So basically, we have the option of displaying different things whenever the line is broken or not. So in this case, yeah, again, maybe we'll bulk this up a bit, maybe make it a three, make it black. Okay, and then, you know, I want this to look the same if I were to break the line. And there we go. I'll have it be continuous versus a dot. That makes sense. And then for these section marks. That is what I want to save until after I apply this. So whenever I do that, we can see our section lines are all red. So really, at this point, we're looking pretty good. So and then again, going back to section and then section marks, I've got my different medium, thin, and wide lines. So if you remember from the tail family, we saw thin lines that were within that tail family. So they're being translated to the project here. And the current project style, you know, the object style within the project for thin lines is just one in black. And so you'll see actually here whenever i zoom in i actually see that black thin line there as opposed to that thicker red line that we set up in the family and that's because it's not been overridden within the project so i need to do that here by going to section marks and then the thin lines there so i'll go ahead and override this here and i know it's kind of going against the name because it's thin but for the sake of this video that's what we're going to do i'll click ok there and right there we can see we got this nice thick red line there very cool that's really what we're wanting to see so just making sure that we have everything set up with our section marks. We have everything here that is red and thick, and we're, we're kind of good to go. Again, we want to make sure all of these are thicker and red as well. 
which we can do like this and then like that cool so that's looking good and so like that that's essentially what i want so i've got my tails and everything and so my hope now and this is just me speaking i hope that whenever i print i can see these show up as red and so this is there's something i want to show you within the print properties if you go to a setup we can see here that there under the options there's a view links in blue and which applies to color prints only so this is starting to make a little more sense because that link because it's literally a link it's a reference to a view that is showing up as blue and so the interesting thing about that is you know it's not checked and so i my thought process is that while within the project it's acting as a link because it is but whenever i print it maybe i decide me i don't want it to be a link so i'll just leave that unchecked now by default it is unchecked so that's something that's good so again what i'm thinking here is that whenever i end up printing this and i'm just going to print uh, the visible portion of this so we could see when I hit preview we, we even actually get our answer here We can see that as as soon as I get the preview I can see that everything within these heads is read exactly like I want and so and then We want to make sure that within these heads. We have the correct uh, Object styles for those lines as well. And so just making sure We'll go back to section lines and so those section marks We just want to make sure they're all three and red that will just cover our bases and I want to do the exact same thing for callouts. It just seems to make the most sense. Call out boundary. They're, yes, they're what we want. So, okay, that's looking good. And so I am actually going to go ahead and print this just for the sake of it. And go ahead and print it right there. And once this prints, print this to the desktop. It'll go ahead and print. We'll see what it looks like because my guess is without those references showing as blue, we could see everything as red that we want. So the thing is, and it's kind of cool, it's good that Revit does this, we actually have the links showing as blue because they're blue and they're functioning. They're, they're not just a static uh, callout head or a section head that just sh is showing something. It's actually referencing something. So uh, let me pull up this PDF. So pulling up this PDF, we can see this is exactly what we wanted. Like we have this entire section mark is solid red. Everything is red that we wanted to. And again, these references, which still work as references, they are now appearing like we want them to. They're acting like references like we want them to, and they, they would like in Bluebeam or other uh, programs that would do that, not necessarily within just Adobe Reader. But this is doing exactly what I want because it's showing up red, and I have the option of changing it to any color, changing the font, anything that I want within the family, and it is actually translating. We can even see that the callout head does that as well. So in reality, it, everything that we did worked. It just doesn't show up in the project as <laughs> it worked because it's showing up as those reference of blue. So that's just something to be aware of. So really, and this this apply the exact same to elevation. I did I did all this for callouts and sections, just not elevation. So be aware of that. So that I mean, really, that will do it. There wasn't a whole lot to this video, but it really is to show you that you can really do what you want and present these callouts, sections, elevation tags, and uh, borders, boundaries, whatever they are any way that you want and so and if you haven't learned something please please demolish that like button it really helps me out a lot and again that will do it i hope to see you in the next video have a wonderful day and thank you for watching